Are your nails weak and brittle, or are you just looking for strategies to improve the overall health and appearance of your nails? Then this video is for you. Here are some tips and product recommendations to get your nails in shape. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis, and I'm a board certified medical and cosmetic dermatologist in Northern California. I'm here to help you understand your skin and your nails and find products that work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Before we delve into the nail care tips, I want to make it very clear that this is not personal medical advice. If you're struggling with your nails, it's really important to get advice from your own physician. Also, this video is not going to cover every single nail issue that may come up. So if you watch this video and you have additional questions, definitely put them in the comments below so I can continue continue to address them. Before we get into nail care tips, I do think it's important to understand some basic nail anatomy. So when it comes to nail anatomy, the most important thing is probably the nail plate. That's what we think of as the hard part of your nail. It's the thing that you get painted when you go and have a manicure. And that nail plate sits on the nail bed. That is the underlying skin. When we're talking about the tip of the finger or the tip of the nail, that is known as the free edge of the nail because it's not trapped by surrounding skin. And then you have something called the proximal nail fold, which is where your nail inserts into your fingertip. Sometimes people confuse the proximal nail fold with the cuticle. And the cuticle is actually a very thin layer of skin that extends from the proximal nail fold. And it's what creates the protective seal between your skin and your nail plate. And then probably one of the more important but less discussed parts of the nail anatomy is the nail matrix. You don't actually see your nail matrix. It sits behind and under your proximal nail fold. And that's where the nail grows out from. One point I really want to make is that the nail plate, the hard part of your nail, is completely dead. The same way that your hair is dead and you can't do anything to really change that nail plate. What you can do is change your habits with your nail care so that as a new nail plate grows out, it's healthier and stronger. And the last thing is if you're looking at your nails and you're seeing different things, whether that's ridging or the nail plate lifting off the nail bed or maybe an infection or a thickened nail, what you're seeing with your nail has to do with what part of the nail anatomy is affected. So if you have damage to your nail bed, it's going to look different than if you have damage to your specific nail plate or damage to the nail matrix. And sometimes when you're thinking about how am I going to address the nail issue that I have, you have to think about first, what part of the nail anatomy is being affected. Oftentimes, if you're looking at your nails and all 10 of your fingernails are affected, this is either due to trauma of all of your nails or due to a systemic or internal cause that's manifesting in your nails. Because you can have internal things going on that change what your nails look like. If you just have one nail or a couple nails involved, that's a lot less likely to be due to a systemic issue and is often due to external forces like trauma or an infection. It's also important to realize that everyone's nails are different genetically. So nails are made up of keratin. It's the same thing that makes up our hair, though it's different types of keratin proteins that make up our nails and hair. And the reason I want to make this point is because when we look at people who have different hair types, if they have thick, coarse, curly hair versus fine, straight hair, the person who has straight, fine hair never really expects their hair to somehow become thick and coarse and curly based on what they're doing to it. And the same should go for nails. Some people naturally have a softer or weaker nail, and some people are born with really strong nails. And it's not to say that someone with weaker or thinner nails can't get their nails a little bit stronger or a little bit harder, but that might not be their sort of default nail and it can be hard to achieve the strongest, thickest nails that they might be hoping for. For example, my nails are crap. My husband calls them butter nails. They're so soft and when I look at my mom, I know she's the one who gave them to me. However, if you have an abrupt change to your nails, so for example, if you always have had really thick, strong nails and they suddenly become weak or brittle, that may be a signal for another health issue going on and it's important to get that evaluated. Now I think it's time that we should delve into basic nail care and talk about what you can actually do to keep your nails looking and feeling their best. When we're thinking about basic nail care, there's sort of two main goals. One is to protect the nail that you currently have from damage and two is to help promote new healthy growth. So let's talk about how to protect your nails. I'm going to focus a lot on this because it is so, so important. If there is one thing you're going to do to make your nails better, it's to protect them from damage. Our nail plate is about 10 to 15% water. We compare that to our skin, which is closer to 20% water. The nail plate is also about a thousand times more permeable to water than our skin. So it's really susceptible to becoming hydrated and then dehydrated. And that rapid dehydration and rehydration really takes a toll on the structure and integrity of the nail plate. Nails that are low in water content tend to be very brittle, whereas nails that have excess water content, especially 30% or higher, will be soft and opaque. But it's important to note that water exposure or overhydration isn't the only reason your nails can be soft. So like I said before, my nails are super soft, but they have been that way since I was a little baby, and that is mostly genetic. 
So of course, my main tip when it comes to nail care is to avoid excess water exposure. And I know this is easier said than done, but just think what would happen to your facial skin if you washed your face 20 times a day. Yet somehow we think we can wash our hands and expose our nails to tons of water on and off throughout the day and not see repercussions. So ideally you're only hand washing when it is truly necessary. I find some of us are in the habit of hand washing and in general, that's a good habit to have, but you kind of have to take a mental note and wonder if you're over washing your hands too. You also may want to avoid things like pools or baths or hot tubs where your hands or nails are having excess water exposure. And then you can think about doing things like wearing vinyl gloves when you're performing household chores that involve water work, whether that's changing over the wet laundry to the dryer or washing the dishes. If you struggle with your nails and you also struggle with hand eczema or dry cracked hands, I have a whole video on hand care that you can also reference that really goes into even more detail about how to protect your hands and nail from water exposure. Aside from protecting from water, it's also really important to protect your nails from other forms of trauma. Our nails, we use them as tools. We use them to pick at things. We use them to open a soda can. And over time, that repeated trauma can do damage. The same way I recommended using vinyl gloves if you're washing the dishes, it's also important to use gloves for other activities like gardening. Another way that we tend to traumatize our nails is by picking or peeling at our nails or even biting our nails. And I find that a lot of times this is very subconscious. Oftentimes I'll have a patient in my office who is there for us to talk about their nail condition. And when I ask if they peel or probe at their nail, they say no but throughout the entire visit, they're subconsciously picking at their cuticles or peeling their nails. If you're picking at your actual nail plate, of course, that's going to affect how your nail looks, but it's also going to thin out that nail plate and make it more fragile. But a lot of people also pick at their cuticles or their proximal nail fold, which can actually damage the matrix of your nail and cause your nail to grow out irregularly. There's actually a very common nail condition called habit tick deformity. I'll definitely put a picture up because it's kind of an interesting pattern, but that's from people chronically rubbing on their cuticles. You also really want to avoid probing under the nail to clean it. I feel like sometimes when we start to see the nail plate lift off the nail bed, which often happens because of trauma, we then notice that we are accumulating a little bit of dirt or debris under the nail. And so we feel inclined to clean it out by using a little tool. The problem with that is anytime you probe under the nail, you're actually pushing the nail plate further off of the nail bed and making the problem worse. And this problem is called onycholysis. The best thing to do if you're noticing dirt or debris accumulate under your nails is number one, to cut your nails super, super short. So that area of lift off is less noticeable and is less likely to snag or become worse over time. And then you can do really short hand washes where you use a tiny little nail brush or even a toothbrush to briefly clean under the nail plate. And when I'm talking about keeping your nails short, I mean really short. My ideal nail length for someone who's trying to grow healthy nails or who may be struggling with their nails is you take a flat surface, you put your finger directly down on the flat surface and your fingertip should hit the table before your nail. But also remember, if you're not struggling with your nails, if you don't have a lot of ridging, if your nails don't feel particularly fragile, it's okay to have longer nails. And that's an aesthetic that a lot of people enjoy. But if you're struggling with your nails, your nails are painful or they're not growing correctly, start with them short. So the reality is any type of nail polish, whether it's a traditional lacquer, a gel, a dip polish, they all are going to be traumatizing to the nail to some degree. Even if a nail polish is labeled as a healthy polish, it really just means that it might be healthier than other things that you might be going for. And it's really not the polish itself that's problematic, it's the removal process. So you might be watching this going, well, should I just never paint my nails? And yeah, perhaps that is a solution. But the reality is if that is an aesthetic that you like, sometimes you have to make small sacrifices. The same way that we color our hair or we heat style it, that's not ideal for our hair health, but that's an aesthetic that we enjoy. And so we always have to create a balance between what our goals are. Also, if you're struggling with your nails, it doesn't mean you have to stop manicures forever, but you might want to take a small break to allow your nails to recover. I've actually found that for some people, they enjoy getting gel nails or dip nails consistently because it helps fortify their nails. So for someone like me who has really soft, brittle nails. I understand that getting a gel manicure is not great for my overall nail health, but I enjoy the way it looks and it actually makes my nails feel stronger. So I'm less likely to pick at them or peel them. The biggest issue that comes with both gel manicures as well as dip powders is that it creates a very tight lacquer or seal on the nail. And when you remove them, a lot of people will go to these sort of like electric files. And the problem with that is if you're using an electric file, it's okay to use it to break down that top coat of polish and then follow up with something like acetone to remove the rest of the polish. But what you shouldn't really be doing is having it electrically filed all the way down to the nail plate. It's impossible to remove just the nail polish that way without taking off those top layers of your nail plate and thinning out the nail. And then oftentimes when I recommend acetone, people go, well, isn't acetone super drying and damaging? 
it's better than the alternative. So that's what we have to go with. Another thing you can do is if you're worried about acetone being too drying is you can apply something like Vaseline or CeraVe healing ointment around your cuticles as well as the edges of your nail before you apply your acetone so that it's not drying out the skin around your nail, which can also lead to further nail damage. The next thing, which you probably knew I was gonna talk about is what to do with your cuticles because a lot of people enjoy the aesthetic of having their cuticles removed. But like I mentioned earlier, the cuticle is the protective seal between your nail plate and the nail matrix where your nail grows out from. And if you are to cut your cuticles or even just push them back, it increases your chance of getting something like an infection or increased trauma or irritating chemicals into the proximal nail fold and into the matrix where it can exert more permanent effects and deleterious nail changes. It's often why a lot of people when they're talking to me about their nail infection, because I see a lot of patients for bacterial and fungal nail infections, they say this happened after a manicure. And oftentimes that's due to the trauma to the skin around the nail. And then one other thing that happens kind of commonly is people develop an allergy to the adhesive used in acrylic nails. And this creates both negative changes to the nail plate itself, as well as can cause an eczema or dermatitis like reaction to the surrounding nail skin. There are a couple of nail polish brands that are known for being a little bit more gentle on nails and one of those is Dazzle Dry. The thought is this nail polish doesn't contain an ingredient called nitrocellulose, which can be a little bit damaging to the nail plate. And Dazzle Dry kind of meets this nice niche of getting a little bit of longevity out of your nail polish, but not being a traditional gel or dip polish. So I feel like that really covers ways to reduce nail damage. Let's talk about ways to actually grow out a healthy nail. First up, if you're going to be doing your manicures or just general nail care at home, it's important to invest in a good nail care set. One of my favorite at-home nail care sets is the Tweezerman Glass Manicure Set. One reason I really like glass tools is because it's very easy to clean and sterilize them, and they're also very durable. So this comes with a great nail clipper, as well as something to push the cuticles. So you have to be careful with the cuticle pushing. But again, like I said, if that's part of your nail aesthetic, you can do it, but just understand that it may increase your risk of trauma to the nail matrix. I also really love the file that comes in this glass manicure set because the grit is really fine. So it's enough to buff down the free edge of the nail without snagging or tearing the nail, which is really important if you tend to have more brittle or soft nails like I do. And then the last thing that comes in this nail care set is something to buff the top of the nail or the nail plate. And I wanna make a little point about this because most nails don't really need to be buffed on the top. Some people like to do that because they like a smooth appearance to their nails or they wanna take down the ridges. But anytime you're buffing the top of your nails, you're essentially thinning out your nail plate and making it weaker. So as long as you understand that you're doing that, it's okay. And I don't think a nail care and health video would be complete without talking about the value or lack of value of nail supplements. Before I get into supplement specifics, it's really important to note that anytime you're taking any type of nail care or growth supplement, it will take several months to see results. Whenever I see an advertisement for someone that says, oh, within two weeks, my nails were stronger and thicker, physiologically, that is not possible. Also, before we talk about specific supplements, I think it's always really important to talk with your doctor before you incorporate supplements into your routine, especially if you take other medication. So the supplement with the largest amount of supportive data for its efficacy when it comes to nail health and nail growth is biotin. Now, I feel like a lot of derms hate on biotin and I definitely don't think it's helpful for hair growth, but there is some good data that it supports healthier nail growth. There've been multiple studies on this ranging in dose from 2.5 milligrams all the way up to 10 milligrams grams a day. And what it's shown is that it can reduce nail ridging as well as help nails grow stronger. Many multivitamins already contain an adequate amount of biotin. So before you add an additional supplement, make sure you're not already taking it. I also want to put the warning out there about biotin affecting certain types of lab tests. So things that measure your cardiac function as well as your thyroid. So if you're having any lab tests done, I recommend stopping any supplement with biotin at least 72 hours in advance just to be safe. If you follow me on Instagram or have watched my other YouTube videos, you know that I take Nutrafol to help with my hair and that also happens to have biotin in it. So I kind of get a two for one with that vitamin. Sometimes people will ask about supplementation with other nutrients like iron or zinc and supplementation with those has not proven to be helpful. Another thing I often get questions on is the value of oral collagen supplements for nail strength and growth. And unfortunately, there aren't a ton of robust studies that prove that regular collagen supplementation helps nail growth, but there are some small studies and Honestly, just from a physician perspective, it is a really nice source of protein. And we do know that adequate protein is necessary for growing a healthy nail. So I think if you're interested in collagen supplementation, it may be worth trying. 
And I will say that anecdotally, I've had several patients tell me that by incorporating a collagen supplement into their routine, they've noticed a change both in their nails and also in their hair. Aside from using a good nail care set and supplementing if needed, I think there are some really nice things you can do at home to take better care of your nails as well. So number one is regular oil application to the nail plate. So like I mentioned earlier, the nail plate is incredibly porous and it often gets penetrated with a lot of water, which can make the nail both soft or brittle. And we use oil to kind of work as a seal within the nail plate to prevent that swelling that happens with water exposure. The way I like to do this is to use some type of topical oil and you don't need a lot, like one to two drops for all of your nails and you apply it every time you wash your hands. I sort of think of it like if you washed your face 10 times a day, you would wanna put moisturizer on 10 times a day and the same thing goes for nails. So there are a lot of different types of oil that work well for nails. I think some of my personal favorites include jojoba oil as well as avocado oil. You can also use something like sunflower oil and these don't have to be fancy oils. They can be what you get at the grocery store. And actually the fact that they are food grade oils means that they'll be good for your nails too. In addition to regular oil application to your nails, there's also something you can do once a week that involves oil as well. And that's a warm oil soak. Essentially what you do is you take about a shot glass worth of oil. So that's where using a cooking oil can be really helpful and you put it into a little glass bowl and then you put that little glass bowl into a bigger bowl that has hot or warm water in it. That's going to gently heat the oil without making it too hot. Once that oil has warmed up, you're going to put all of your nails into the oil and let it soak there for about five minutes. And you're gonna do that on each hand. That prolonged oil exposure, again, is going to help build a healthy shield within your nail. And the fact that it's warm helps it penetrate better. However, for this to work, you can't have any nail polish on. So this can be part of sort of a home manicure ritual where you remove your nail polish, do a warm oil soak, and then the next day you can put polish on. You can put polish on immediately, but I find it's better if you let the nail sort of sit with the oil before you go in with polish because it's going to adhere better. After you do the warm oil soak, you'll want to follow with your favorite hand cream or even body lotion to just lock everything in. I know this might seem like a lot of work, but nails don't just magically get better. You kind of have to work at it. And it doesn't mean that this has to be part of your routine always. But again, if you're trying to get your nails from where they are to someplace better, this might might be temporary interventions that you should do. Another nail product that I really like is actually the Carousel Intensive Foot Repair. So if you've watched some of my other Instagram videos, you know that I love this for dry cracked heels, but it's also actually amazing around the nails. The way I would apply this is to just take a very small amount and apply it to the cuticle and around the proximal nail fold a few nights a week. That's going to help soften the skin around your nails as well as make it more moisturized. I find that if you're dealing with a lot of hangnails or ragged cuticles, this is a really good way to calm them down quickly. Sometimes people will ask if there are certain nail lacquers that they can apply to make their nails better. And what I really like is the CND Rescue RX. This is essentially a daily keratin treatment. So you're applying it to a bare nail to help fortify the plate that you have. And remember, the nail plate is dead, but by applying that keratin topically, it can help nourish the nail and make it less likely to break or become fragile. A couple of other products that I really love for growing healthier nails are the Cutamol Nail Cream and the Dermanail Nail Conditioner. These were actually recommended to me by one of my patients, and I have since recommended to so many people who also love it. The Dermanail Nail Conditioner is something that you actually just apply to the cuticle every single day, and the Cutamol Skin Cream is something that you apply to your hands and around the nails. And the last thing I wanna say about nail care and optimizing your nails is you need to be consistent over a long period of time. Nothing with nails happens overnight, but if you are consistent and you stick to a plan, you will see good changes. Do you have any favorite nail care products? Please let me know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.